Hello everyone and welcome back to Ushanka Show – Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Show. In today's video I want to show you the interesting report from July of 1964 relates to Nisuni. Nisuni. Nisuni can be loosely translated as the carriers, so the people that carry stuff out of the factories. And I already made a couple of videos on this topic. One video was called Stealing at Work – Soviet Workers' Peculiar Behaviors. And the other one – They Steal Everything – 1980 secret report that shocked the Soviet government. Links to those videos will be in the comment section below. In order for you guys to understand better this report, I need to explain you a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about Prakhadnaya. Prakhadnaya. Pretty much every Soviet factory and other facilities had so-called Prakhadnaya, which could be translated as a checkpoint, although if you translate Prakhadnaya, it's just the area where you walk through, but it was actually a checkpoint. A person who worked at Prakhadnaya was called Vakhtyor, and his main responsibility was uh, tracking people coming in and leaving, so when they come into work, they'll show their ID or they grab a badge, or he would know them personally, so he will be making sure they show up on time, and only people who are allowed to come to the factory can go through. And his second, also very important responsibility, was to watch people on the way out, to make sure that people don't carry items with them, and of course, it should be called stealing, but we didn't consider it stealing, we called it carrying it out. Of course, if you were a smuggler, Nisun, the safest way to steal an item from the factory would be toss it over the fence, but then of course you risk into have it lost or picked up by someone, or you need another person on the other side, so then of course there's extra, extra logistics issues if you try to sneak items over the fence. So the most popular way of carrying items out of the factory would be smuggle them through the checkpoint, through Prakhadnaya, and of course it was up to Vakhtyor to watch people, and if they carry anything suspicious or they look suspicious, he could stop them and search them. And since a person on Prakhadnaya, Vakhtyor, was considered unqualified worker, his pay was pretty low, so now we must consider the fact that he could be easily corrupted. For example, for a bottle of vodka, he would agree to take extended smoke break right at the time when a bunch of workers are living in the factory. Or maybe he just didn't want to become an enemy of co-workers, people who work at that factory, or for other reasons. So quite often, people would fail into properly search the workers, or just close their eyes and let people carry out whatever they wanted. And of course, the workers themselves came up with ingenious ways of smuggle items out. I already told the story about my father, who was a spray painter, at the Kiev Aviation Factory making Antonov airplanes, so he had access to paint and paint thinners, and the way they smuggled that stuff out, they filled empty this funny looking triangle milk cartons, they'll clean them, and then they'll fill them with paint, and then will carry them in their avoyska, those open bags, and it will look totally legit, because as a spray painter, my dad was getting free milk at the factory, so they just claim, well, I'm just taking milk home, so... I just recently found a story about uh, people working at the sugar factory. So ladies, they sew in a special pockets in their bras and their underwear. So they will have outside large pockets on the, their rear part. So there was even a joke that they say the girls look so different. You know, they come to work like normal ladies and they're coming out like a models because their boobs are huge and their butts like big as Brazilian butts but of course because they were full of sugar. Okay, and now we're ready to read and analyze this report from July of 1964, and it's addressed to the Bureau of the Central Committee, Central Committee of Communist Party of the Soviet Union in Russian Federation. This report describes events that happened in Moscow at the factory number three of the Moscow meat, they call it Miasa Kombinat, so it's like a meat factory, and actually, that specific factory was manufacturing sausages, kalbasne zavod. So local department of militia, and remember, in Soviet Union, police was called militia, militia. So together with some Komsomol members, they performed checking of workers that were leaving the factory after the ending of the night shift. So there was a surprise visit, surprise uh, check. So that brought the first question for me, like, it looks like somebody read it out or reported to militia that there's something going on 
at the factory and they made a surprise visit. So they didn't trust people at Prahadnaya. They decided to do themselves. So it tells you the situation was pretty bad at that uh, meat factory. As the result of this late night raid, nine people were detained and a total of 120 kilos of stolen meat products were recovered. For my American viewers, 120 kilograms equals 264 pounds divided by nine people. So in average, every person was carrying out of the factory about 30 pounds of meat products. And then they give examples. So cleaning lady, last name Cezina, she stole from the boiling shop, so where they boil meat, I guess, 16 kilos of Lubitierska kielbasa and other meat products for the total cost of 45 rubles. And usually cleaning people were making 70 rubles, 70 a month. So at one night, she was stealing meat products worth of 45 rubles. And it says stolen meat products she tied to herself under her, under her clothes. Other cleaning lady, last name Vasilieva, stole 11 sticks of, we call it varina kielbasa, so boiled, it's not like a bologna kielbasa, total weight of 15 kilograms, and then some sausages for a total amount of 42 rubles. It's about the same amount of money. And stolen meat products she tied to her legs and to her body. And then the list is continuing, and most of these people are cleaning ladies. So at night shift, there'll be cleaning crew coming in, and besides cleaning, they'll be also stealing a bunch of food items. And quite impressive amount so it looks like every lady was able to steal around 10 kilograms up to 15 kilograms of uh, different meat products and they give you different varieties what they took and i said total amount was 100 uh, so 120 kilograms i need to do into the money so it was probably well worth almost 500 rubles uh, of stolen meat product then it says that all detained people uh, will be so they will carry some uh, criminal punishment, so probably go into prison. And there is interesting detail in the end that during the investigation it was determined that these two people, they were actually armed guards at the factory. One was a lady, one was a guy. So during the people living the work, they also left their uh, post at the Prahadnaya, which was utilized by the all these uh, stealers. So I guess there was an agreement. Hey, why don't you go somewhere for a while while we're living? And then we'll share with you with some meat products. Oh, we'll give you some money. Uh, but apparently, as I said, somebody uh, dropped a dime and called the militia to check this uh, factory. And now let's take a look at a couple of these caricatures. So this one, it's actually Miasa Kambinat. So that's your a meat processing uh, factory and the sign says instead of watch for the cars which was standard it says watch for ham and you see people tossing uh, meat products over the fence and in this picture the warehouse guard storage is guessing which girlfriend came to visit him so he says masha niet zina no vera no while other guys are carrying a bunch of stuff out of the warehouse and this picture a guy walking from the prahadnaya once again and looks like factory is making tires. And it says, Pari grudj kalisom. So, dude has his chest in the shape of the wheels. That's how we say barrel chested person. We say wheel chested person. So, that's kind of a joke here. And this picture of workers are living Plodo Ovachnaya Baza. So, that's the warehouse uh, where they store fruits and vegetables. And you see, the only guy who doesn't carry anything, and his co worker tells him, like, hey, you should just grab something just because everyone is so suspicious of you. So like you look like you work for KGB or something because you don't take anything from your place of work. Even the guard is steering him with, with suspicion. So this caricature is from 1970, one year before I was born. So this stylish lady tells the guy at the checkpoint at Prahadnaya, Чему вы удивляетесь? Сейчас в моде длинные платья. Why are you so surprised? Long dresses are in style right now. This one is one of my favorites. Сын весь в тебя. Игрушки из детсада приволок. So wife tells her husband, Look, your son is just like you. He brought a bunch of toys from the kindergarten. On this picture, two guys are drinking beer, piva, and one dude tells another one, 
I work close by at the meat factory. So as you see, he has a long sausage that he drags all the way from his place of work so he can snack while he's drinking beer. Okay, my friends, it's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. As you see, the problem of Nisunstva, people uh, stealing stuff from the places of work was so widespread, was so commonplace that it was just made fun of and I guess it was considered just the cost of doing business in socialist society. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's good. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So. Uh, like